Happy Sabbath Church. It's about to say good morning. Is it still? No. Not good morning anymore. Isn't it great to be here this morning? Have you been blessed so far? I've been blessed to be here. Blessed just because I'm here. Yeah, whenever I'm here, I feel blessed. And blessed because I can be part of all that is going on this morning, the singing, the prayer, the, the Sabbath school, and everything. Because I could be anywhere else. Actually, I have the choice to be anywhere else. But I choose to be here. So I bless the name of the Lord because I made the right choice. And I came, and I'm blessed. So I, I, I praise God, and I thank our Father in heaven for the privilege to be able to share the word with you today. After a very difficult week, at some point I was not sure I could make it because I spent my week sick. You know, came here last Sunday at a blessed time with the men um, at our men's prayer breakfast, and then uh, everything was going well. Went to work on Monday, could not stay at work because I got terrible fever. Had to go back home, and I was home the entire week. Sick. Had to go to the urgent care center, uh, still on medication. At some, at some point, I told myself, I, I'm not sure I can do it. I cannot focus, and I'm hurting, every part of myself is hurting. And then guess what? I'm here this morning and praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, regardless of how difficult the week was, I can still be here with you, enjoying the time with our Lord, praising him, because he deserves all of our praises. And this is what we've been doing this morning and thinking about what I would be sharing this morning or this afternoon for you this morning for those from the first uh, service. Uh, and I went and stopped to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13, that reads, Therefore, Guard up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I titled my sermon, 90 second to midnight. 90 second to midnight. Lord God, our Father in heaven, we are privilege to know you and bless to be saved by you. So we are here at your feet today. Feed us, Lord. Whatever you know that our soul needs the most and help us take it, nurture it as we want to get closer to you and accept your salvation. Amen. On January 24, 24, 2023, the Science and Security Board of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, as we set the minute hand on the doomsday clock from 100 seconds to midnight to 90 seconds to midnight. The doomsday clock, uh, was created in 1947 and is a design that warns the public 
about how close we are to destroying our world with dangerous technologies at our own making. It is not only a metaphor, but it is a reminder of the perils we must address if we are to survive on this planet. And the clock has become a universally recognized indicator of the world's vulnerability to global catastrophe caused by man-made technologies. And the bulletin focuses on three main areas, nuclear risk, climate change, and disruptive technologies, including developments in biotechnology. What connects these topics is a driving belief that because humans created them, we can control them. Yeah, we created them. We can control them. But the truth of the matter is the, the um, doomsday clock has attracted its shares of criticism from various uh, uh, sectors. It has been accused for, it, uh, for the opacity of its methodology. And others even consider it as a, as a political, uh, having a political agenda. But I can understand that people of good conscience, of great experience, with connection to the powerful, very smart people, very concerned people, let's say simply good people can put their effort together and can uh, call everyone's attention on the risk we are exposed to, on the sword of Damocles hanging over our head, over our planet. <clears throat> because the fact is, the topics they are bringing on the table for discussion are real. So regardless of their intention or, 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 the, or relevant, the action they are advocating for, these topics are real. Nuclear threat and climate change, um, new technologies, these are real. And as for the time, 90 seconds to midnight, they are looking, they set it this year to 90 seconds to midnight. They are looking at, it's like telling people that potential cataclysmic event on this planet, man-made event. And the goal is to say, we are so close to midnight, people. Wake up. We cannot, we cannot destroy ourselves. We can still stop it because we, you men, we made it. This is their goal. <clears throat> but for us, Christian, we do know for sure that there is an extraordinary event that is coming. There is an extraordinary event in, in, in the making. There is an extraordinary event in the way that will be visible to everyone. No one will be excluded. Everyone will see this event. But the difference is, if those uh, I'm working on the, the, the doom's clock, putting it at 90 seconds uh, um, um, to, 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 to midnight, is saying, is saying, let's prevent this to happen. We, the event, that we know for sure is happening. We are tr not trying to prevent it to happen. Instead, we want it to happen. This is a good news. It is not bringing just destruction and everyone will suffer from it. No. The good news that we know, people, is that Jesus is coming back soon and we want Jesus to come back soon. We don't want to prevent it to happen. This is the good news. We know it. We agree with it. But let me tell you this morning, the fact that we agree with it is not enough. Knowing that Jesus is coming back soon, accepting the fact that Jesus is coming back soon is not enough. We need to go further in our choices, 
and make the conscious, conscious choice to accept this coming and to accept that we need to be transformed to really enjoy the coming. We have to decide that, yeah, I want to be saved and accept the concept, the, the idea to be saved. Yes, we have to accept that we want to be saved when we accept that we want to be saved. We have to accept the way to salvation, which is Jesus. We have to accept Jesus in his totality, not some part of Jesus, not some version of Jesus, but we need to accept Jesus as the way and take away ourselves from the picture and allowing Jesus to be in the picture to take control so we can go his way not our way and let me say it before going further nothing I will be saying today it's new it is just repetition and there is a reason for this because we need this repetition we need to be reminded again and again and again of those truths if we need to continue this journey. Because guess what? We've been hearing it for so long. It's easy to say. It, it sounds easy. It looks easy. But you know, it is not easy. This Christian journey is not easy. It's not just go to the Bible, pull verses here and there, put them together and have that special mixture and it is done. No, this is not real life. This is not real Christian life. Real Christian life, this real Christian journey, it's come down to making real choices accepting that Jesus, but guess what? While you're accepting, Jesus is telling me, come as you are. And this is the great thing about it. He's saying, come as you are. And this is what we don't get in Jesus. Why come as you are? Because some of us, we are not that desirable. But he still say, come as you are. But what Jesus say also, you cannot be saved as you are. Come as you are, but you cannot be saved as you came. And this is what we need to register. We, we, we don't come to Jesus because he said, come as you are, and we come as you are, and now we try to create a Jesus, a God, uh, to adjust that Jesus, that God, as we are. Because he told you to come as you are. It's not going to work. Regardless how skillful you can be, how smart you can be, regardless of what tools you use, you will always fail if you want to take Jesus and try to adjust that Jesus to the person you are because he told you, come as you are. Hey, guess what? Sometimes this is what we do. And sometimes we even tell Jesus, listen, you told me to come as I am. So you went to this place. You bought me with this ticket, say, as is. And on the top of it, it says, no return. So, sir, you get me as is. You got me. No return. You cannot reject me. So you have to keep me as I am. Sometimes I feel this is all I am dealing with Jesus. But guess what? Cannot work. Come as you are. You cannot be saved as you came. You have to change. You have to go to this transformative process. And again, this, this, this transformation, this, this, this uh, um, a commitment to change, this choice to change cannot be, be, be only 
something at the intellectual level, or I understand it, or I figure it out. It cannot be philosophical understanding of this thing. It cannot be just appropriation of concept. No, it's not even an emotional attachment. It's no emotional attachment. Oh, I feel you. No, it needs to come deeper than that. It needs to come from where in your body that Jesus or God give you the, 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 the capability to make real decision and stick to those decisions. It needs to come from you, from your mind. There are changes that need to happen in your mind, in my mind. My mind has to change. My heart has to be softened. The, my spirit has to be regenerated. My soul has to be transformed. If those things are not happening, I am still looking at Jesus and telling him, Sir, you got me as is. You got to keep me because you cannot return me. And will change. When you are in the process of will change, you need to, what is going to happen, will change is accepts to change against yourself. Accept to change against personal belief. Accept to change against some of your hard-kept opinions. Accept to change against on stances that you have on matters, on some ideas that you have cherished for, for, for a long time. Accept to change on your feeling. Accept to change on things that you know, that you take are true, that you have to accept to change on generally accepted truth, on supposed conventional wisdom. Accept to change means Bring everything on the table and say, Lord, I'm willing for you to change me. I'm willing to change everything. Everything is up for change. Yes. Unfortunately, what I found, I found that sometimes I'm telling Jesus, you know, this is who I am. This is how I see stuff. This is how I see people. This is all when I think about it, this is the result of my thinking. Because this is all I see, Jesus. Oh, this is not my fault, Jesus. I was born like that, you know. And this is from three generations, is my family. This is all we are in my family. Oh, all right, I'll change when I'm dead. No. If I want to be really benefit from the change that I can find in Jesus, Everything must be on the table. I need to be able to, 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 to accept, to take a look at everything, everything new. So I need to ask Jesus, I need your help, Jesus. I need your help, Jesus, to, 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 to transform this mind to take control over this mind. This is what takes me to 1 Peter 1, verse 13. The, 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 the image that is used here, 1 Peter 1, verse, uh, verse 13. Um, Therefore, guard up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope, upon your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Um, if you read, and I invite you to read the, 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 the first verses of this chapter, verse 3 to 12, to understand the concept, the, 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 the context, why Peter is, why he's speaking as he's speaking, you know, writing what he, how he's writing here, because Peter is telling those people in view of the blessing, you'll read the first part, and hopes that we'll find in knowing Jesus. At this point, at this point, therefore, this is what I'm inviting you to do. There is one thing you have to do kind of to completely seal the deal in Jesus as you are contemplating his returning, his soon return 
there is something that you have to do to seal the deal, the transformation of your mind. This is key. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. The imagery that is used here is, a, is, a, is using imagery from his time with a man like, uh, if you, let's say that this man has to bone and has this big robe and then could, cannot bone in that type of things. No, why? It has to do, he has to take all, 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 all the extremities of this big robe and bring them up and then guard all them around his waist. So this is what is the, the, the imagery that he is using here to tell them, therefore, gird up the loin of your mind as to say to each one of us, as to telling me, gather up the loose end of your mind. Because you know and I know, I can tell you when my mind decides to go around, go crazy, or sometimes, according to my own understanding, go smart, let me put it that way, you know, there are so many loose ends. And uh, Peter is saying, um, um, gather up the loose end of your thinking. In other words, Think twice. Stop thinking you know it all. You are smart. Get this thing under control. Because you are in a battle. And not an easy one. Not any ordinary battle. Not the battle that you, you watch on TV or, or, or that you can see going on. Oh, 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 oh. Ukraine or whatever battle what you have seen because this is serious stuff. This is why the Bible is saying that, well, the battle we are in is not an easy one. Ephesians 6, 6 12 is clear. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. I don't know about you. I haven't visited any of those places yet. I don't know what are going up in those places, but I know there is a battle going up there. If I don't, don't take it seriously, I won't have the preparation, the, 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 the strength of mind that I need to face this battle that is raging around me that I can't even see. You could even think it's unfair. Hey, what about this other verse in the Bible? Apostle Paul, Romans 7, verse 19. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. For the evil I will not to do that I practice. Does that make any sense? Who, as I would like to know, who is this guy who had that remote control somewhere and controlling me when I want to do the good and controlling me with this remote control? I want to do good. I don't do the good and I do the bad. The bad that I don't want to do is the bad that I'm practicing. Someone got to add a remote control. It's literal here. That means this is no small game. This is not physical battle. This is spiritual battle. This is a battle to control our mind and I will circle back. Get your, the loose ends of your mind under control. Second, be sober. Another image that is being used, be sober as is not to be drunk. It's not about drinking alcohol. Be sober in terms of get them under control so you can make sure that you have a clear mind, a clear understanding of what is going on, a clear understanding of the challenges. 
of what is on your back. A clear understanding that there is someone who has a remote control controlling you. And then you can get this under a different control. Someone else can get the remote control. I don't mind if someone has a remote control controlling me. I want to be sure I choose who I give the remote control to. And it's all about you. It's clear that the goal of the devil is to attack and take control over our senses, take control over our mind. And when I'm thinking about it, I say, well, let me not even think about those who rejected God and or who step away from God. You know, it's true that the devil is controlling them. But this message is for me. This message is for me. Profess Christian. For all of us, students of the word, who claim to have accepted Jesus and to be saved by grace. But while we are claiming it, we forgot that by the time that we took that decision, what we should be, have in mind is from the beginning. We were told to beware. There were a warning. Revelation 12, 12. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come where? Down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. The devil, we were warned, beware, it is coming. And the devil is not here to play fair game. He has come to destroy. He has come to exert revenge. And for that, it will use all tools necessary to achieve its goal. And there are so many tools in his arsenal. It will attack some. It will be visible in some cases. It will attack others. It will not be visible a lot of time. So beware. It's not about do I choose to be in that fight to save, to control my mind, to, so my mind can be under God's control. It's not about a, 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 a fight of my choice. It is a fight that is. I don't have the choice to decide I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it means, okay, I decided, I've decided, okay, you can have it, devil. It's about it is. And we all understand. And we all agree. The, the, the basic principle of what you feed your mind has great influence on you. Because if we are talking about controlling, it's about what gets in. We, we, we know that what you get is has complete influence on you. But still we are lazy. And I feel lazy and weak when it's come for me to take action sometimes. And finally, when we reach the point, uh, we act on it, yeah, we make some real progress. We call on Jesus for help. We get rescued and we start living uh, 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 that, that life where mentally we are going to, we, we, we think that we are getting it right, you know, and, and we are living that life is in Philippians 4, 6, 8, be anxious for nothing, uh, be in um, everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind to Christ Jesus. Finally, whatever things are true, feed for the mind, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of good report, if there are is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Oh, well, when we start, when, when we are living that life, and then the devil says, I have to change strategies now, and I'm going to use some more subtle attack. 
And sometimes the, the devil is using the truth, starting from some truth about God, about God's will, and transform them into element of distraction. And here we come. Amongst us, the concept of arguing sometimes for no reason. But we argue with each other. We, 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 we build deep disagreement on things that we're not supposed to. We, we sidestep basic notion of Christian love or, or God mercy just because we want to be right. We, we, we become, we transform ourselves into warriors, warriors for God. And the devil, oh yes, build that warrior mentality sometimes, the way that it is built only not on Jesus, but on our own making, what we think is right, that we are doing right for the Lord, and the devil say, now I'm going to feed you red meat. And boom, the devil put red meat. We start arguing against each other on truth, Oh, we start arguing about Sabbath observance and what is acceptable or not. Oh, COVID-19 comes. Oh, this is another thing we have to argue and disagree and fight against. Oh, about a vaccine or not vaccine, about COVID in prophecy, about end time prophecies. Oh, if you are leaving the big cities or not, is it time to run away or not? You know, red meat. Political stuff. Oh, do you think a Christian can be a Democrat? Oh, no, no, no. A Christian cannot be a Democrat. Oh, you think a Christian can be a Republican? No. A social and cultural issue about abortion, LGBTQ, race, identity, all the things in the intersectionality of politics, religion, and society. Oh, we discuss and we fight about structure and governance in the church. We discuss about, oh, we fight about women ordination. Oh, all the church manage the funds, uh, the music at the church, and the church discipline, the jewelry, the dress code. Oh, Ellen White, or signed in prophecy. And we, we fight over everything. We fight each other. We, we, we throw Bible verses at each other. We throw Ellen White writings at each other. We call each other's name. We disfellowship. We fire. We put out of church. We push out leadership, all because we call ourselves warrior of a good cause. And let me be clear here. If you're following me, my point is, the devil is starting from truth, from things that are the will of God. It's not that we are fighting based on some sort of heresy or, or, or craziness. No, these are things that are God's principle. But because it, we, we, we transform ourselves in sort of warrior, forgetting that when you are a warrior, you are at war, and you are at war, you are after blood. You are for a kill. There is no salvation involved. Well, Jesus wants to save so we need to reset our mind and say, Jesus, yeah, these are things, serious things for our time. Oh, Jesus, you want us to stand for the truth. Oh, you want us to share the truth. Oh, you want us, Jesus, to take a stand for you. Oh, you want us, Jesus, to explain the truth to our kids. Oh, you want us, Jesus, to explain the truth to this individual, to this co-worker, to this family member who cannot understand it. A total warrior as human, uh, under some human standard, and when we, we are head down in that type of war, in that type of warrior mentality, we reach a point where we lack, uh, we reach a point where we have a lack or a complete uh, um, absence of self-awareness uh, where we are, we are dealing, we are doing that and we are dealing with some deep things inside and we don't even have time to take care of those deep things that we are dealing inside with. Deep things that are consequential for our own salvation. Things detrimental to our own salvation. 
I don't want to be outside some sort of warrior and at the same time, I come here and some of you, I don't even stain you. I can't even see you and not turning and talk bad about you. I can be some sort of, and at the same time, I think that it's fine for me to mistreat my spouse at home uh, because uh, supposedly the spouse is wrong. You know, I can't be that warrior at the same time at work. I uh, have no hesitation to get involved in unethical practices or treating badly my employees or my co-worker or fighting with no mercy for advancement for more money or participating in some really shady and if not illegal activities and feeling no shame and all that I get to say, oh, you know, this is how corporate America works and this is how government works if you have to advance. Well, all this is happening. The devil is celebrating happy. I got them on their own terms. And Jesus is sad. And praise to, be God, to God because there is a Jesus. He's sad, but he's not discouraged. He's sad, but he has not thrown the towel. Jesus is saying, there is still hope. He's calling us into reason and back to him. We are too busy doing supposedly do his work, but he's calling us back home. We are too busy in our fight, you know. Uh, let's say we, we, we fight hard to, to force the respect of God's come out of the commitments of God. Well, we forget the God of the commitments. What's that sound right, Adi? We fight to force the observance of the commandments of God, but we forgot the God of the commandments. God is telling us it's time to, to stop, to take a pause. It's time to stop and to take a pause. God is telling us and my intent is not to call, to ask you, oh, you Christian, you go sit back on your spot. Uh, 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 we need to take a truth now. No, this is not my point. My point is God's will for humanity was set at creation. It has not changed. We iterated at Calvary. It has, it, is not, it has not changed. Same will to save us. It has not changed. But his expectation for the way we should live our lives, treat others, carry ourselves, have not changed also. And he's telling us that the devil came. And indeed, the devil came and continues to create more and more desperation, challenges, problems, destruction, division, and continue to make the, the, the key thing controlling our mind. This is why. And I will stop here. This is why. The call for each one of us this morning. The call for each one of us this morning. First Peter 1, verse 13. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind and be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Take control of the all of the loose ends of your mind. Keep them under control. Put them under the control of the God who set things from the beginning, who came to die to reset things, and who is coming back soon, people of God. It's 90 seconds before midnight. May God bless you. I'm going to invite all of you to stand as we sing our closing song in Christ alone, in Christ alone. 90 seconds to midnight. Time is closing. Let's welcome God back. Amen. Welcome him back with your lives. Welcome him back with the faith you have in him and that you always knew. 
that he died on the cross for you as a living sacrifice it's our duty to live for him amen we're all singing in christ alone in christ alone my hope is found he is my life my strength my soul this corner soul solid ground this solid ground firm through the fiercest trial this soul what hearts of love what depths of peace when fears are still when striving seems comfort
solid ground, Jesus. So we call on you, Jesus, to come into our life now. Call on you, Jesus, to come into our mind now and to take control and to stay. Lord, we came as we are. We come as we are. But we want also to be changed in the men and women we, we want us to be. Please, Lord, we authorize you, Lord, come into our life and to push away all hesitation, all obstacle, our stubbornness. Push that all away, Lord. Save us. This is our prayer today. Save us, Father. Jesus, the mighty. Amen.